If you happen to be in the market for buying up large amounts of steel fencing, well, you're in luck. Because instead of using the millions of dollars worth of steel fencing that the U.S. government already purchased in order to protect the U.S. southern border, well, the Biden administration is instead currently in the process of auctioning it off to the highest bidder. I repeat, those giant steel slats that President Trump bought in order to build the wall are now being auctioned off to the public for pennies on the dollar. Furthermore, according to new reports, some parts of the wall that have actually been built are now being left wide open, allowing people to walk straight in. And the Border Patrol agents who are on the ground are not even able to close the wall because their superiors ordered that the doors not just be opened, but be welded open. Now, if that all sounds too ridiculous to be true, let's start at the very beginning. This right here is a government surplus website called govplanet.com. It's one of many websites that the U.S. government uses to either sell off equipment that they no longer need or to sell off surplus equipment that they shouldn't have ordered in the first place. And on there, you can find some interesting items. You can find Humvees, tactical vehicles. You can find bulletproof vests, medical kits, forklifts, and so on. You can find a huge plethora of items. However, what was really surprising, what really shocked a lot of people who frequent that particular website were these giant lots of unused steel fencing that were being auctioned off by the U.S. government. The exact fencing that was purchased by President Trump in order to build the border wall. Specifically, since April of this year, 81 of those square structural tubes, which could have been used to either finish the wall or to patch up those comically missing pieces of the wall, they were instead sold off for a cool $2 million. And the timing of these auctions is really important because they're being done at the very same moment where Congress is about to pass a bill which would force the federal government to complete the wall. Here's how a story in the New York Post described the situation. Quote, the U.S. government is auctioning off all barriers which prevent the people from smashing those like and subscribe buttons. Now, now I am, of course, just kidding about that. There are no barriers to smashing those like and subscribe buttons. And so please take a moment to do so so this video and this content can reach ever more people via the YouTube algorithm. Now, here's what the story actually said. Quote, the Biden administration is quietly auctioning off millions of dollars worth of unused parts from former President Trump's border wall for peanuts in an apparent end run around pending legislation in Congress. Just last month, as part of its annual defense appropriations package, the Democrat-led Senate passed a Republican-sponsored bill aimed at forcing Biden to stem the worsening migrant crisis at the U.S.-Mexico border by extending the wall. The Finish It Act will make the feds use those materials on new wall construction or hand the remaining stock over to states like Texas for them to use in their own border defense projects. But now, the Biden administration is rushing to get rid of the wall leftovers before the GOP-led House can pass a matching version of the bill and make it law. Meaning, the U.S. Senate passed a bill which would force the federal government to either finish the wall or to at least hand over these wasted materials to states like Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and California in order for them to do something constructive with it. This bill, once again, it passed the Senate, which is currently in the hands of the Democrats. However, before that bill could also be passed in the House, which is currently in the hands of Republicans, before it can be passed in the House and become law, in this brief interim period, the Biden administration is going ahead and just selling off the materials for pennies on the dollar so that when the bill ultimately passes, there just won't be any materials to finish off any wall, making the whole thing moot. Now, on the one hand, politically, you can say this is a smart strategy. But on the flip side, it really makes you wonder, why are they choosing to go this route? Why have they, for one, allowed all these materials to just sit out in the sun for the last two years and rust? And then secondly, why are they trying to sell them off instead of giving them to the individual states who could make use of them. If the goal was really to secure the U.S. southern border, this line of action wouldn't really make sense. Furthermore, in terms of the scale, the sheer amount of material that we're talking about is mind-boggling. In fact, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, they provided a cost estimate to everything that's being left out right now over in the U.S. southern border, and here's what they wrote in regards to the materials. Quote, the unused materials are costing the federal government $130,000 per day and nearly $50 million per year to maintain. The materials themselves are estimated to cost roughly $250 million. $250 million worth of materials costing the U.S. taxpayers a cool $50 million per year to maintain. All the while, the U.S. southern border continues to have these huge gaps in it, which could easily be filled up with the steel fencing, which is instead just currently rusting in the sun or being sold off for pennies on the dollar. Furthermore, besides the portions of the wall that remain unbuilt, there are other portions of the wall that are built but for some reason remain completely open. 
specifically. Over in Arizona, there are portions of the U.S. southern border wall which have these storm gates built into them. Now, these gates are normally kept closed. However, they are opened during the monsoon season in order to prevent the border wall from being damaged structurally. That's why they were installed in the first place. They're open during the season and closed afterwards. However, in a shocking development, U.S. Border Patrol, they not only opened the floodgates, but they actually welded them open, which, as you likely guessed, gave thousands of illegal immigrants an easy opportunity to just stream right into the state of Arizona. Now, the New York Post was able to get a hold of U.S. Border Patrol and get a statement from them, and here's how they describe the situation. Quote, Last Friday, Customs and Border Protection released their latest operational figures showing the border sector at Tucson, which includes the area with the open floodgates, has become the busiest in the country, with the Border Patrol encountering 42,561 people trying to cross legally and illegally into the country in July. A couple of weeks earlier, Border Patrol agents, acting on their superiors' orders, welded some 114 gates open to stop anyone from closing them, which the agents had repeatedly been doing in a bid to stop people from being able to cross the border. So just to pause here for a super quick moment and summarize. One of the absolute busiest areas for illegal crossings in the country happens to be exactly where the border wall is open. For a while, the Border Patrol agents were told by their superiors to open the gates, which they did, but then they would often close the gates in order to stop the flow of illegal traffic. And so, in order to fix the problem, the top brass at Customs and Border Protection, they had the gates welded open so that nobody can close them. The article continues, quote, When we first reached out to Customs and Border Protection, we were directed to other federal agencies that were allegedly involved in making the decision to leave the border doors open. However, when we reached the other agencies, they said it had nothing to do with them. Eventually, Customs and Border Protection took ownership of the decision and issued this statement. And this is then the statement from them. U.S. Border Patrol makes the final decision on opening gates based on operational conditions and forecasted weather. High water flow combined with excessive sediment and debris buildup can stress or compromise the design integrity of the barrier. Once the rain or flood event is over and the debris and sediment are removed, the gates can be closed and secured. If the doors are open, they also allow a certain variety of antelope to wander between the U.S. and Mexico freely as a part of their natural habitat. Very cool. However, while the gates are quite literally welded open, quote, cartels are exploiting the situation, dropping off migrants by the busload so that they can casually walk into the U.S. through the open doors and hand themselves over to border agents. However, this story gets even wilder, which we'll get into right after I introduce the sponsor of today's episode by showing you this little piece of money. Or rather, I should say that this is fake money being printed into oblivion by those geniuses over in Washington, D.C. And so before they completely obliterate your life savings, what I recommend you do is to convert that fake money into real money, which is physical gold and silver. And the best company to use is the sponsor of today's episode, American Hartford Gold who also happens to be my own personal gold and silver bullion dealer. They have thousands of other five-star ratings across the country. They have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. They ship quickly, directly to your doorstep. Their product listings are awesome. They're stacked with great options of gold and silver bullion and coins, and they have amazing customer service. When you pick up the phone and call them, you feel good knowing you support a company that supports the truth getting out into the wider American audience. And so calling them up is a no-brainer. But best of all, if you tell them that Roman sent you, they will throw in up to $5,000 worth of free silver with your first purchase. It's 866-242-2352, or you can simply text the word Roman, R-O-M-A-N, Roman, to 65532. Of course, all their details will be down in the description box below. And now, let's head on back to the studio. And as of right now, at least 1,400 migrants per day from countries as far away as China and Egypt are just walking through these welded open gates at the U.S. southern border. But that is only part of the story. Because these 1,400 per day, that statistic, is only what we know about. These were the people that Border Patrol agents were able to catch, apprehend, and process. However, there's a totally different side to the story, which is the number of people who were never caught in the first place. People who were able to cross the border, evade detection, and make their way into the interior of the country without anyone knowing about it. These people are known as the gotaways, the people who got away. And up until now, these gotaways were not really part of the conversation. They weren't discussed as much, largely because reporting on them is difficult. However, our team here at the Epoch Times, we went down to the U.S. southern border and spent months down there with the sheriffs documenting exactly this, the gotaways. And we just produced a brand new documentary which exposes this hidden aspect of the border crisis. Here's a trailer. People from 160 countries illegally cross the U.S.-Mexico border and give themselves up to Border Patrol. But what about the ones who evade Border Patrol? These are known as the gotaways. 
you can safely assume that anybody that went through the extra effort to avoid U.S. Border Patrol was not a asylum seeker by default. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but somewhere down the road, if somebody rapes and kills somebody, and we find out that they came through here on my watch, that's unacceptable. These men had surrounded my house. They were banging on my back door. They were banging on my front door. I can't understand it unless you're out here seeing it every day. 21 dead bodies on the road. Code 3 response. Is it wrong to ask people to come to your front door or your home? Then why would it be wrong to ask people to come to the front door of our nation? Their primary goal is to circumvent the checkpoints, go undetected. People that do not want to surrender, those are going to be the potential terrorists, the criminals, the real threat to the U.S. We were hoping the federal government would step in and do something, but they didn't. We have no clue who they are or where they're going. That's the scary part. If you'd like to check out that awesome documentary, I'll throw a link. It'll be right there at the very top of the description box below. You can just click on that link and head on over to Epic TV and watch that documentary right away. Otherwise, if you'd like to go deeper into anything we discussed today, I'll throw all my research notes for today's episode. They'll be down in the description box below this video as well. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed. And most importantly, stay free. Mm -hmm.